I'm George Crump, Chief Steward at Steward Switzerland. Today's screencast is on the state of Enterprise Solid State Disk. Today we'll be discussing, first of all, some background on Steward Switzerland, who we are and what we do. Then we'll go over, in general, what Solid State Disk is and how you might use it in your environment. And then we'll also focus on some of the buzz behind Solid State Disk, why all this, it seems like this technology has come out of nowhere. And then lastly, who is providing Solid State Disk? What are some of your options for selecting this type of a product? At any time, if you have questions, please email info at storage-switzerland.com. And then also please note that we have a SSD resources page, and that can be found with the SSD HTML. So first of all, who is Storage Switzerland? We're an analyst firm. Uh, focused on the storage and virtualization and cloud computing marketplaces. We have knowledge derived uh, from over 25 years of experience in the IT market. Uh, all of our team members have at least that much time uh, in the IT space. Some come from uh, end users, others come from big storage integrators. Uh, so we have a, a wide degree of backgrounds and uh, capabilities. And then of course we spend a lot of time interviewing you, the end user to understand what your needs are and what challenges you're facing. For additional information, please go to our website at storage-switzerland.com. That will give you information on us, uh, articles that we've written both uh, on our website as well as in external publications. And then also we'll give you additional links to webcasts like this one. So moving on to our subject today, what is the state of solid state disk? First of all, what is solid state disk? In the, it, we focus on enterprise solid state disks, so we're not going to spend any time today uh, talking about the different type of solid state disk that is now common in laptops. We're going to be spending, spending a lot of time focusing on its enterprise use. So in the enterprise, it's an array of memory organized as a disk drive used using integrated circuits rather than mecha mechanic or optical media. There's also two types. There's DRAM-based solid-state disk. That uses, typically uses a battery backup with a hard drive copy-out option because DRAM, just like the DRAM in your computer, uh, does not, is not persistent and won't hold the storage. Uh, also, some technologies now will actually do the uh, dump out instead of to hard drive. The DRAM uh, devices will actually dump to a flash-based system. And then the other technology that is really gaining a lot of attention in the market is flash. It's already persistent, very similar to what's in your camera or anything like that, but now it's designed for use in the enterprise. And we'll go over some of the key aspects that make it ready for that. So to some extent, this has now started a debate between flash-based memory and DRAM-based memory. Uh, so let's look at some of the pricing that we see in this market. A common price point for flash-based SSDs is about 150k for two terabytes of storage. That's, by the way, down 100, from 180k in August of 2008. So we've seen a significant price drop, and we'll continue to see that throughout the market. DRAM, on the other hand, is priced about 60k for about 128 gigs of storage. We choose those specific uh, points, uh, capacity points. For, because that's where you tend to see the average purchase for the, each of these technologies. And as we'll get into later, we'll explain why the size difference between the two technologies as well. We are, however, in DRAM seeing an increase in the interest around 256 gig capacity systems, and those are around 120K. Um, just to put it in a direct comparison, in general, two terabytes of DRAM-based SSD to compare it to the flash-based SSD would cost more than $700,000. So what, so what is Solid State Disk? Again, diving in on this uh, DRAM versus flash debate, it really comes down to how much speed do you have to have, how many writes or how write intensive is your application, and then how much does lack of performance impact your organization's revenue and or image. So put it into number standpoint here, as you can see on the screen, uh, disk, which would be the classic technology we would compare this to, generally it has read-write speeds of somewhere between 4 to 5 milliseconds, with random IOs of around 150 to 300 uh, IOs per second. That's on a per-drive basis. Flash-based SSD, on the other hand, 
has a read speed of about 0.2 milliseconds and then write speed of 1 millisecond. You can see that the write speed is significantly slower uh, than the read speed. And then in random IOs, uh, on reads, random reads, flash SSD gets about 100,000 IOs per second. On writes, however, as you can notice in the callout, only in, writes only generate about 25,000 IOs in random writes. And that can be a problem in some environments, and it's something we'll talk about in a little bit more detail. DRAM-based SSD, on the other hand, is very fast in all scenarios. Writes, it's 0 0.015 uh, milliseconds, uh, and reads, it's 0 0.015 milliseconds. The random I.O. nature of, of DRAM is somewhere around 600,000 I.O.s per second, extremely fast. Uh, in, in most cases, this limit is not really a function of the memory. It's more a function of the surrounding technology. The, the pipes that we use to deliver the information can only deliver it at about 600,000 I.O.s per second. So as we see faster and faster storage connectivity, we expect to see that speed go up uh, substantially. So in this case then, are flash SSDs bad? No, not really. Compared to mechanical drives, they're still very, very fast. They're, when used in the right application, a read-heavy environment, they deliver excellent, excellent performance. And the other thing that I don't list here is they are priced very affordably compared to DRAM-based systems. So what about write endurance? That's what something you'll probably hear a lot of, that solid-state disks wear out or things like that. It's really becoming less of an issue, and I'm not sure if in the enterprise it really ever was. So flash SSD's write endurance, essentially what write endurance is, is each block on a flash has a limit to how many times it can be read, uh, written to. So every time you write to it and then have to rewrite to it, you erase that section and then write it again. The negatives are, that you hear about flash-based systems are based mostly on the MLC technology, which was common to use in the consumer market, not SLC technology, which is more typically used in the enterprise. A typical SLC device has a minimum of 100,000 write-erase cycles and would take probably three years of constant writing to fail. Samsung, as an example, is now shipping a 500,000 write erase SLC chip. That it's essentially the same chip but just better testing to weed out the worst chips. This brings the numbers uh, up to very acceptable standards almost 10 years before there's a significant failure of any kind and in any storage technology I don't think we expect to see a lifespan of more than 10 years so for all intents and purposes it becomes a non-issue. So then the other side of the equation is why use DRAM? In solid state technology, performance is still the key determining factor as to whether or not you purchase the technology. And as you can see again in that chart, clearly DRAM based SSDs outperform everything that's available today on the market and we have absolutely no concerns about write endurance or things of that nature. So it, it really comes down to how much performance do you need and how much durability do you need?